Here's a cute kitty. Have a great day and thanks for watching. What's the scariest theory known to man? As an astronomer, I feel like I always pop into these threads to clarify theories people saw on a documentary once. So here's one that freaks me out a little that the universe is a false vacuum. This is, in short, a theory scientific hypothesis that our universe is actually in a false phase, state as part of a larger universe, like if it were in a temporary thing, think the real universe is a pot of boiling water and we are just within a bubble forming at the bottom of the pot. Eventually however that false vacuum has to pop you yes, even after billions of years in this false state. And we and everything we know in our visible universe will disappear in an instant with no warning whatsoever, and there's nothing you can do about it. Sweet dreams. Doesn't bother me a whit. I wouldn't know. Nobody would know. No one and nothing would suffer. So, worse ways to end. Also it helps that I don't have the intellectual capacity to understand what that fella's going on about. We're all gonna ducking die. The Great Filter. It's a theory about why the universe seems so filled with potential for life, and yet we haven't found it. It states that somewhere between pre-life and an advanced civilization capable of colonizing the stars, there's a great filter that stops them and ends life. This means humans fit into one of these three scenarios. A. We are rare, meaning we've already passed the great filter, unlike other civilizations on other planets. B. We're the first, meaning conditions in the universe are only now life friendly, and we are among many on our way to the capability of colonization. C. We haven't hit the filter yet, meaning we're ducked. If this one is true, it means finding life or proof of life on Mars or Europa would be awful news, because it would almost certainly mean the filter is still ahead of us instead of behind us. The statistical probability that not everyone who reads this thread will still be alive by Christmas. Yeah duck you. Let's kill him, so that none of us have to die. I forget the name of the argument, but it goes as follows. Assumptions. The brain is the origin of all consciousness. The brain operates on electrical impulses. External stimuli can affect the way the brain operates. Any external stimuli to the brain can be simulated to a degree that the brain cannot distinguish these simulated stimuli from natural stimuli. The point, you could be a brain in a jar, being fed false impulses for your entire life by an external source, or, you, still a brain in a jar, could be hallucinating your entire life from lack of stimuli. It's a thought experiment called the brain in a vat. If I were a brain in a vat, I'm certain I would imagine getting laid more often. A bit late but here it is, you might never be alone. Imagine if there was a 2D person. If you stare at them a certain way, they can't see you. All you have to do is look from a top view, and they won't know you're there, and they would never know. And living their life as 2D, they would never be able to comprehend how something could be looking down on them. Now imagine a 4D person. They could be looking at you from a 4-dimensional angle. An angle that you will never understand. They could be right beside you, but you wouldn't know, and you would never know. And just as we could interact with the 2D person, the 4D person could interact with us. But as long as they don't want us to, we could never interact with them, yet even know of them. TLDR so when you think you're alone, there could be something right next to you, staring at you, and you will never know. Terror management theory. Everything that humanity has ever accomplished beyond basic survival has been motivated by a fundamental and irreducible fear of non-existence. Our conception of self and self-esteem generally is simply a buffer against the anxiety that comes with recognizing that we will cease to be. Culture is just a massive shared delusion to mitigate our fear of the unknown and ultimately of death. Thus we want to imagine certain works of art as timeless or to place value in family lines and offspring to project ourselves beyond death. We take comfort in our value systems and the structures that arise from them, whether that's through conceptions of biological kinship, national political identity, religious faith, etc. This includes belief in the inherent value of ensuring the future of humanity through scientific progress. Indeed much of modern western life is devoted to the avoidance of death, the various euphemisms and stock phrases in mourning, the entire funeral home industry that serves to remove death from the ordinary course of life from the home, and onto the embalming table, or into the crematorium. We build up the artifice to avoid the brutal reality. 
TLDR. Everything that we've ever done, and ever will do, is motivated by nothing more than our existential terror in confronting death. Let's say we have an anthill in the middle of the forest. And right next to the anthill, they're building a 10 lane superhighway. And the question is, would the ants be able to understand what a 10 lane superhighway is? Would the ants be able to understand the technology and the intentions of the beings building the highway next to them? So it's not that we can't pick up the signals from Planet X using our technology, it's that we can't even comprehend what the beings from Planet X are, or what they are trying to do. It's so beyond us that, even if they really wanted to enlighten us, it would be like trying to teach ants about the internet. This. The main counter argument here is that we are intelligible beings, meaning we actually are aware of ourselves and ask questions. Our driving force as humans is to understand. While the technology would likely be difficult to initially figure out, we have basic understandings of how the world actually functions on a subatomic level. This gives a greater premise to even begin to fathom what an alien race would have. TLDR. It's not that the ant doesn't understand, it's that the ant doesn't try in the first place. But what if there's a step beyond awareness that we don't know about because we can't comprehend it? Rocco's Basilisk. A super intelligent AI will determine how to retroactively punish those who did not help it come onto existence. A supercomputer in the future will kill you today for not helping it 10 years from now. Furthermore, the proposition says that merely knowing about it incurs the risk of punishment. Well now I know about it. I'll know who to thank while I'm getting tortured. We are currently living through what many biologists consider to be the sixth mass extinction that the world has ever seen. This is going to be an interesting puzzle for the species that comes after us. Can you explain this a bit more? I'm really interested, but I'm not sure I understand. It wasn't until around the year 1800 that humanity reached a population of 1 billion after thousands and thousands of years. In the 215 years since then, the world population has increased to 7.2 billion. That exponential growth has very large and long-lasting negative effects on our planet and will continue to do so until we reach carrying capacity and die off. Eternal Hell. It's literally the worst thing any human can imagine that, by being a bad person you will be condemned to torture for an infinite amount of time. You might be able to reason that it's justifiable to be tortured for as long as you lived, or some algorithm related to such, but eternity is overkill for the sins committed during a run imaginably minute sliver of time. In the Jewish belief they believe that you only go to hell till you've repented from your sins so could be 5 minutes could be eternity. If you get deep into particle physics, you start to realize that there really is no such thing as solid matter. Everything in the universe appears to be built upon waves of vibrating energy, and if you look deep enough at anything, there's really nothing there, at all, and we don't actually exist as matter in space-time in the way you think we do. This concept supports a smorgasbord of fantastical theories, the idea we live in a simulation, the idea that there's actually a god of some sort, the idea there's multiple universes, some say an infinite number of them, or any number of other interesting ideas. It's just worlds stacked on top of worlds stacked on the shell of a turtle mate, nothing more, nothing less. There's a really brutal one I've heard, but can't remember its name. It basically says that every horrible thing you can imagine has been done by someone in the world at some point in human history. I can think of some pretty messed up things and it creeps me out that they may have been done before. Yeah, scafism is a notable ducked up thing that took place in the ancient past. The amount of torture. Nope. Nobody was pushed out naked on the surface of the moon. There is a spooky skeleton inside all of us has to be the heat death of the universe. The universe will keep expanding, and energy will keep diffusing until everything is homogeneous. And then, nothing can happen. Eternal stillness. It's hard to worry about something that is so far in the future, and comes hundreds of billions of years after our galaxy fades away, our solar system dies out, and our planet gets engulfed in flames from when our sun turns into a red giant. The simulation hypothesis that it is more likely that we are just a virtual program running than that we are real. What's the difference really? That's what I tell myself. I don't care if I'm really just a few lines of code in some godlike extra universal being's own simulation. This place looks very real to me and I'm free to make my own decisions. 
that clips are just tiny ducks. Suck on that, homophobes. Of AJJ is just an inside out Venus, and vice versa. You can change genitals at will by blowing into your thumb as if it were a beach ball or sucking all the air out of it. When God and Lucifer had their battle in heaven the devil actually won and cast out God. Now he is sitting up in heaven, pretending to be God, while he wreaks havoc down here. It would explain a lot. Make a Hulove movie if done properly. That you will forever relive your own life. It does make a lot of sense, because once you die you don't belong anywhere, not space or time, and you always exist during the time you were alive, so you might just be constantly experiencing it all. Even if your life is good it is pretty horrible to know that all that you learned will disappear, and every mistake you do anything to take back will be repeated and experienced over and over. But think of most lives, and it gets infinitely worse. And then those, that were extraordinarily horrible. Talk about unfair. That I'm actually retarded, so everyone treats me like I'm normal. Quantum suicide slash quantum immortality. The idea that we never really die in our perspective. Every time we encounter a situation where we may die, we continue on in a parallel universe where something happens that prevents our death. But we die in the original universe. In a sense, our consciousness lives on by transferring itself to a parallel universe where we continue to exist. The Phantom Time Hypothesis. The Phantom Time Hypothesis is a historical conspiracy theory advanced by German historian and publisher Herbert Illig, born 1947 which proposes that the year 613 was followed by the year 911 and that historical events between AD 614 and 911 in the early Middle Ages of Europe and neighboring regions are either wrongly dated or did not occur at all and that there has been a systematic effort to cover up that fact. The hypothesis suggests a conspiracy by the Holy Roman Emperor Otto II, Pope Sylvester II, and possibly the Byzantine Emperor Constantine VII to fabricate a dating system that placed them at the special year of AD 1000, and to rewrite history, inventing the heroic figure of Charlemagne among other things. <laughs>